First, let's get the easy stuff out of the way. If the moon were a disk in the sky, or a projection on a surface, anytime you were looking at it, other than directly perpendicular to it, it would be oval. Period. Sure, at the horizon under specific conditions, it can appear compressed from top to bottom, but once it gets above the horizon, that compression is gone. Whereas if it were a projection or a disk, it would still be oval. Many flat earthers like to bring up the moonlight temperature experiment. And yes, I did perform that test. And yes, apparently the surface lit by the moonlight is cooler than the same surface shaded from the moon. I performed this out in the middle of a field, far away from any trees or any warm objects, such as buildings or cars or anything like that. But what most flat earthers don't realize is that this actually disproves the claim that the moon is self-illuminating. Because anything that produces light produces radiation. Anything that produces radiation produces heat. So therefore, the moonlit side would always be warmer if we were talking about a self-illuminating moon. So everybody who has posted that has confirmed that the moon does not produce its own light. The claim of a transparent or translucent moon is an attempt to cover the reason why the unlit portion of the moon is the same color as the sky when visible during the day. Nothing else. Because flat earthers do not want to say that this is the result of the atmosphere between the observer and the moon. As seen in every high altitude balloon video taken during the day. Not because the sky is behind the moon. Yes, I have seen the claims of stars being visible through the dark portion of the moon. But there is absolutely no correlation between those objects which are claimed as stars and any stars known to man. There's also a few other problems with this. First... The observation of stars through the dark portion of the moon would not be a rare sight. Anyone with a mid-grade camera or telescope, binoculars, or even the naked eye would be able to see the stars through the dark portion of the moon every night. Another issue is, in reality, because of the exposure settings required to see the features of the moon's surface, you would not be able to see the stars at all because they would be far too dim. As you can see in this video, which I shot on a crystal clear morning, you see the moon with earth shine, but the only other thing visible to the camera on this crystal clear starlit morning was Jupiter. In fact, I would argue that 99% of the stars in the sky would not have the light intensity to be photographed at the same time as the moon if the exposure settings were set to view the moon's features. So it's not only that they're not the stars, the stars would not even be visible to the camera. So, since no observation supports the moon as a disk or a projection, and every observation of the moon defines it as a spherical body, then another observation which would not occur with the moon low on the horizon, on flat Earth, the moon would not appear to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise when viewed from positions north of the equator and south of the equator, no matter if it was east west or directly overhead. It would, however, rotate in a horizontal yawing fashion, quite noticeably. There would be features of the moon visible to those north of the equator that would be turned away in the south, and vice versa. Here is a scale representation on flat Earth of what you would expect to see. First from Edinburgh, Scotland, then from Sao Luis, Brazil, near the equator, and finally from New Zealand. Here's what it really looks like on flat Earth in those locations. The beauty of science. The beauty of science. Science. The beauty of science. science. The beauty of science. The beauty of science. So
Okay, here's a summary of what you just saw. With the moon low on the horizon, moving from Scotland to New Zealand, the moon observations would yaw horizontally. It would not rotate. Using an accurate model of claimed flat earth measurements, you can see that there are features which would become visible around the right side of the moon as you move further south. Now, actual observations from Brito in Scotland, Cat Earther in Brazil, and Daza in New Zealand do not show this yawing observation, but rather a rotation counterclockwise as the observer moves further south, as well as the fact that these photos are practically identical to those expected when viewed from a globe. Now I must point out here, yes, there is a small amount of yaw mixed with the globe as well, due to the observation locations from a very large Earth to a small moon, but because of the moon's distance, they would never be more than a barely visible two degrees due to the observation locations from the north and south poles. Unlike the approximate minimum of 37 degrees displayed here, just in the north-south distance from Scotland to New Zealand. To all the people who contributed to the moon video, I really appreciate it. I didn't take into consideration that in the north, during that particular time frame, the moon was very low on the horizon anyway. So times and the position of the moon and the, the moon's perceived rotation made it very difficult to use this for what it was intended. However, let me go ahead and show you this so you all know what I was doing. Science. It gives man the ability to see beyond the limitations of the human animal. The beauty of science is its endlessness. The beauty of science, it asks you for nothing. In return, it gives you everything. The beauty of science, just simply ask the questions. Science will give you the answers, whether you like them or not. It shows you what you might not able to see. It tells you what you would not otherwise know. It shows you the vastness of reality and takes you to where you never thought you would ever go. The beauty of science. Of 
of science 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 so here are the results of moon recordings from the 23 folks who sent me videos of the moon low on the horizon back in December. Not once is it shown the yawing for a flatter spherical moon or the oval appearance of a flat earth disk as would be expected on flat earth. Some of the rotation disparities are noticed from those in the northern hemisphere, but only because I did not state a specific time in my request. But you do ultimately see a counterclockwise rotation of the moon as the observations move further south. This cannot occur on flat Earth. And now, here are other short facts worth mentioning. For half the moon's cycle every month, the moon rises south of east everywhere on Earth and sets south of west everywhere on Earth. From Alaska to New Zealand, it doesn't matter. This is impossible on any of the proposed flat earth models. Oh, and by the way, so does the sun for six months out of the year. Everywhere on earth. If the spherical flat earth moon is to be to believe, then for the northern hemisphere to get a full moon, then the sun would have to be due north at that same time. Those in the southern hemisphere would witness a crescent moon directly above the sun at that same moment. Yes, I have seen Skiba's Flat Earth Moon Phase Calculator using Stellarium viewed as an observer on the South Pole with a field of view set to nearly 360 degrees and then he reversed it and imposed it on a Flat Earth map. And lastly, please, stop claiming that the moon out during the day is impossible on a globe. You have no idea how silly that claim is. Y'all have a nice day. Oh my god.